Hey, what is up guys? It is Slick or Slick Mafia back again with another video and if you want to know how much of a DC fanboy I am, I have my hands on Spider-Man PS4 yet here I am making a Superman video. Now, okay, I did just release a Spider-Man PS4 video yesterday. I'll link it below in case you haven't seen it. It's a uh, Easter egg video from the Sam Raimi trilogy, so check it out if you haven't seen it. But in any case, Let's talk about Superman. So, this is going to be kind of like a chilled out discussion video. I'm actually laying in my bed right now. So, this is just going to be giving you my honest thoughts on this situation, okay? So, basically, in case you're unaware, the reports now are that discussions of renewing his contract, his being um, Clark Kent, Superman, a.k.a. Henry Cavill, right? Um, those discussions have basically collapsed, and it now seems as though we may not be getting Henry Cavill as Superman anymore. Now, his manager has come forward and said, actually, it's still a possibility. It's not out of the question yet. And this comes just a few days after we learned that he's doing this new Netflix series. Like, he's playing, like, Gandalf or some bullshit. Like, or, like, Lord of the Rings, something. I don't know. Something like that. Whatever. Okay. So... Here's my thoughts on this. Now, a lot of people that I've seen, even some of my friends and colleagues in the industry, for instance, uh, Shiraz, of, uh, Shiraz of Comic Book Debate, okay, um, I've worked with him some in the past, he's a really good guy, I talked to him, he's a good friend. Um, now, let me, let me just give you my thoughts on this, though. Um, he's tweeting this and talking, t tweeting about this, and his, he's sort of speaking very negatively towards WB. And a lot of people have come forward and said that, oh, WB doesn't deserve, you know, Henry Cavill or whatever. And I think that this is a little bit misguided. And I'm going to tell you why. Because what you are not considering is Henry Cavill's part in this. Okay. A lot of time, actors come forward and they demand an ungodly amount of money and they really kind of overvalue themselves. Henry Cavill is not necessarily an A-list actor, I would say, at this point. Uh, he was in Mission Impossible. That probably elevated his his standing and that kind of thing. But I, I wouldn't put him on that A-list. He's not Tom Cruise, uh, The Rock, you know, the all you know, Jason Statham. You know, it goes on at Morgan Freeman, etc. He's not quite on that level. Okay, he's a B-list actor. He's not a C or D-list, but he's not A-list either. Okay, and for all we know, he could be demanding an absurd amount of money for the studio. I mean, of course, he's going to be asking for millions of dollars, but maybe tens or I, I don't even know. I mean, tens of millions per movie, probably. And maybe he's asking for a hundred million a movie. You don't know. And when you have two hundred million dollars for a budget for these superhero movies, you don't know how much he's asking for. Okay, and WB just might not be able to afford it. I mean... Justice League didn't make that much money, okay? So, basically, my perception of what's going on here is that he had a three-movie kind of deal, okay? So, he was in Man of Steel, obviously, and Batman v Superman, obviously, even though he famously only had 67 lines or whatever. Uh, but that was just Superman, not Henry Cavill, it totally is Clark. Uh, but I don't know, whatever. Irrelevant. Uh, and then the third movie that he was in was Justice League, okay? So then his contract expires. It's time to get a new contract. How does that work? Well, they have to negotiate a new contract. They have to figure out how much he will be paid for each movie and how long the contract will last. So if you're in your best interest as a studio, you're going to create the most amount of movies with the least amount of cost. Um, and it's not necessarily because these studios are greedy. Once again, I mean, it happens all the time where studios invest 200, 300, 400, 500 million dollars in movies and they just lose out their money. I mean, it's just a, a net loss. They, they make the movie and it's, you know, they lose millions and millions of dollars. And if you're a movie studio like WB, that's the main way you make your money is by theater releases and this, you know, and, and, and that kind of thing. And if no one's buying the tickets to see your movie, you're not some evil shady company for wanting to make sure that you can actually, you know, break even because the budgets on these movies have ballooned so much so that it's really difficult to make them. It's, it's very, very expensive. But in any case, like I said, we don't know Henry Cavill's perspective. And he's not going to say that he's asking for a lot of money. His manager is going to be the bad guy. That's always how it works. And Grace Randolph has talked about this to some extent that evidently Henry Cavill wants to be valued as an A-list actor on the Ben Affleck, Tom Cruise, uh, you know, Jason Statham kind of level. 
and um, WB clearly doesn't think that he's worth that value. Now, here is what the manager is saying. So the manager is saying that there's still a possibility, and this is also a political play. It's it, This is my perception of the situation. What she's doing is saying that there's still a possibility, don't give up hope, and WB will see the outcry of how many people want Henry Cavill to be Superman, and they will agree to accept their very, very egregious deal uh, financially. Okay? Now... Once again, this is not an evil tactic per se, but she's just giving that glimmer of hope and really hoping that WB will overturn it. Now, at this stage, it doesn't look exceedingly likely, but it doesn't look impossible either, and that's exactly what the manager is wanting to portray here. So I just wanted to give that perspective. Now, what's my thoughts on this? My personal opinion. I want Henry Cavill to be Superman. I mean, he's, he's an amazing Superman. He looks the part. He plays the part incredibly well. It's tough to find somebody that really, really looks the part of Superman. You can be like, oh, he's just, you know, a white guy that's strong or whatever. Yeah, not not really. I mean, he, ha he has a specific look, um, he, you know, uh, like, yes, he's he's just kind of an attractive American guy, basically. I, I get it. But at the same point, I think that, you know, you can find attractive American guys that don't look like Superman, and Henry Cavill clearly does. So it's not so simple as just finding, you know, a random white guy that's buff on the corner of the street. That's not really what you need to sell Superman, and Henry Cavill sells Superman quite well. Um, I think that Justice League uh, portrayed Superman fairly well in terms of his, his mood and tone and that kind of thing, but I also really like BBS, so, you know, that's, uh, people have issues with that and think that it's not really their Superman or whatever, and that's fine, but um, I think that if we also go the 60s direction and he has his underwear, you know, wearing his underwear and he is uh, just joking around all the time, I don't think that that's going to fit in within the the current landscape of comic book film with that being said henry cavill i really hope that he comes back i really hope that they can make this work uh but once again you know it this is just a war of attrition in these negotiation deals and it's really unfortunate but um i guess here's the deal what happens if henry cavill can't return does the dceu get rebooted at that point probably okay just reboot and this is, I, I'm the one that never wanted a reboot. Maybe you can even reboot with Shazam, okay? Now, Aquaman comes out in late 2017, and just see how the movie does. See if there's any allusions to the rest of the DCEU. If that movie's perceived well, it performs well, then that's fine. Shazam, I know, is going to do well. I'm fairly sure of it, because uh, it looks like it's going to do pretty well, Okay. So, what... I'll make another video on this. Um, what should they do with the DCU if they reboot? Now, um, I think they can definitely approach things differently than they did, and, and I'll make an entire video on that separately. But I just wanted to give my thoughts on this. It's a, it's a really, really interesting situation. If Henry Cavill drops out, Ben Affleck is really iffy or, like, wishy-washy. It's been years of contemplation if he's going to do it and all that shit. Just, just reboot. Just say... Affleck, Cavill, we're done with you. You did a great job as both your characters, which they did. They're both incredible iterations of their own, of their respective characters. Um, but we really need to reboot. Uh, I guess get rid of Gal Gadot too. I mean, that's the thing is, if you reboot, you there's no turning back. You cannot keep some things like, well, we like this, we didn't like this. D dude, if you're rebooting, you have to reboot it all. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Because if you have Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman interacting with Henry Cavill Superman and then this new guy that's playing Batman, like, it just doesn't work. You, you look at the previous movies, it just does not make sense. You have to reboot it all. Uh, the DCEU's done. Five, four or five movies, whatever. It's over. Um... And it's time to start over. And you can either start with Shazam, which I think could be a decent starting point. It's not necessarily the foundational building block that they're hoping for, or they would kind of want. But that's the way that it's worked in the past. You know, we started with Man of Steel for, for the DCEU, and then we started with Iron Man for the MCU. You don't need that foundational building block necessarily. And then really going overboard on some, on some cool comic book shit. You know, not just following the typical formula of... Oh, you know, Batman, three-act story, blah, 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 like, detectives, you know, I mean, get, get some interesting stuff going in here. Add, 
you know, make a movie, make a Batman movie, and put in ten Batman villains, and make it really fucking cool, and it's like a comic book on the biggest screen. That's just my nerdy inclinations to say this, but I really think that that's the direction that could be quite uh, fruitful for them, and could really yield some great results. So, um, as I said, I don't want to go too far into it. I'll make a separate video on what I think the DCEU uh, should sort of do, um, especially if Henry Cavill's not coming back.